Washing machines are uh, boring. Nobody wants to spend uh, money on a washing machine, but but you know when you when your clothes are dirty, you need to wash your clothes, and it kind of sucks not having one. And the same goes with tripods. You never see people on Facebook arguing about tripods, uh, the brands of of tripods, like they do with camera brands. But it kind of sucks not having one when you need it. If you need a tripod, what should you keep in mind when you go buy it? First of all, what are you shooting? Are you shooting extreme landscape situations in Iceland or, or Greenland or something like that? Or are you occasionally shooting your families at Christmas? There's a huge difference in build quality you're gonna need for those two scenarios. If you only have big and heavy tripods suitable for, uh, you know, landscape, wildlife photography, what you gonna use a big and sturdy tripod for? You're never gonna bring it when you, you do longer hikes or when you, when you do travel photography, for example. Uh, and if you only have a small, tiny, light little travel tripod, you will find it is completely useless in, uh, in, in extreme conditions like landscape photography in Iceland. I need two tripod. I need one which is heavy duty tripod uh, for my landscape stuff. Um, I need good build quality because I want it to last and I want my expensive camera gear to be safe on top of this tripod. I need another tripod for when I'm traveling, when I uh, when I take long hikes or uh, when I'm traveling uh, and doing other type of photography, for example, travel photography. I don't need uh, I don't need tripod a lot in travel phot photography, but I need it sometimes. So I, 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 I want a small light one. Shopping for a tripod can be a nightmare. There are so many and the, the prices, they range from $5 and up to hundreds, even thousands of dollars. And that's not including the tripod head. So how do we choose it? Usability, what do I need? What am I shooting? How is the design of this tripod? The payload, does it carry your heaviest uh, uh, camera lens uh, combo? Height is important. How high can you put your tripod and how low? For example, if you have a center column, it can get in the way of how low you can put your tripod. Uh, in some tripods, you can take off the center column and others you can tilt it. But in some, it's just there and you cannot do anything about that. And what type of locks do you have on your tripod? I, for example, I like the twist locks because I can, I can work uh, with a twist lock in my big uh, 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 gloves, for example. And the stability, the stability is extremely important. And can you actually hang something from the center of it to, to pull it down, to make it heavier? Practicality is another thing. Weight and uh, which materials are used, which is usually corresponding with weight. Now, mostly what we see are carbon fiber, which is extremely strong, durable and light material. So that is what I would personally go for. Packing size, is it gonna fit in your backpack? Do you have a holder on your backpack? Or uh, for example, if you're traveling on a plane, does it fit in your, uh, in your, in, in your luggage, can you bring it anywhere? That's uh, a practical thing you need to think about. Price is one of the last thing I look at because it's not because I'm, I'm irresponsible with money, it's quite the opposite. If price is your only variable in, when you buy a tripod, think about this. Does it sound right to put a $5,000 equipment on a $50 tripod? Just think about it. You don't need to answer. Of all my years of leading photo tours, I have seen 
many cameras and lenses completely destroyed due to bad tripods. So spending a little and get quality will probably save you money in the end. And if you treat your tripod well, it is gonna last you a long time. Here's a chart that shows the value of a tripod in American dollars on the y-axis and the number of accidents every day on the diamond, diamond beads in Iceland on the x-axis. As you can clearly see, tripod, tripods under $200 are not very reliable. But, uh, but, but, but if you go to like 400 uh, US dollars and above, your chances get a lot better as you can see on this chart. But someone might ask, uh, Ole, where does these number come from? Well, they come from my imagination, but they do represent my experience with hundreds of clients on photo tours, cheap tripods destroy equipment. Although this uh, video is about tripods, primarily about tripods, you can apply all the same things we discussed here with uh, tripod heads. There are many types, I tried a lot of them, but in the end it's always ball head. I do recommend a ball head, it is simply my favorite. Just make sure when you buy a tripod hat, like with the tripod, it has to be able to carry your heaviest camera lens combo. So I just got this massive tripod. Uh, I was sent this from my uh, friends at Photo Pro, which is the company that makes this tripod. And uh, I'm working with them now, so I'm not hiding anything from you. But I would never say something that wasn't true, wasn't my experience. I tried this tripod now, and I honestly can say I do recommend this tripod. The one thing which is kind of cool, uh, there's a lot of, lot of cool things with this tripod, but one thing which is really cool is the center column. I sometimes like to have a center column. It is very convenient sometimes uh, to use that uh, can, you know, to, to raise it if it's not very windy. If it's windy, I would never ever use a center column. But if it's not windy, it's fine. But uh, the problem with a center column is, I like to be able to take my tripod, uh, uh, all, all, all of it into this position, because I want to shoot low. I would put this on the ground, and so this would be my height. With the center column, if, if I cannot remove the center column, this is my height. This is not, this is not, this is too far from the ground for my style of shooting, when I'm shooting uh, low and close to an object. So, what I can do here is I can just remove this center piece here and take this whole unit off with the uh, center column and the uh, ball head and everything, and I can put this one on. Unscrew the ball head, put it on here, and I have a tripod with no center column, and that is really cool. It looks heavier than it is. It is a carbon fiber tripod. It's strong, it's durable, and it's not that heavy. Uh, having said that, you know, it's, uh, it's a big tripod. The locks, the twist locks, I, I, I do like that. It's very convenient and uh, I, can, I can work them with big gloves on. It's not that big actually. You can raise it quite high and it can go quite low. So it's both high and low. And for packing purposes, <clears throat> I can just remove the, uh, the ball head and then it's not that big actually, uh, it's pretty good, I like it. It's a great tripod, it comes with these little icy uh, thingies, you just uh, take the, uh, these guys off, unscrew these, put this on, and it's more stable on 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 an icy surface, on ice or something slippery. So I hope this video will help you uh, on your quest for a brand spanking new tripod, even if buying a tripod is not very sexy. 
like buying a new lens or a camera or something like that. But having said that, thank you for watching and uh, goodbye.